Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with baked cauliflower fries. That's right, there's a pretty good chance you've never heard of baked cauliflower fries. And by the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly why that is. Since when you consider the amount of time and work involved, this may be one of the worst recipes I've ever done. And sure, I could have filmed something different and you never would have known about this, but I just didn't want to cheat you out of the chance to make fun of me. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing I set out to do was chop some cauliflower very finely in a food processor. So I broke down that large head into some smaller pieces. Speaking of which, let me give you a little tip here. These pieces you see me putting in need to be way smaller. And also you should put in way fewer. Because what you see right here did not process very well. I had to stop it like nine times to pull out chunks and move stuff around. But anyway, let me head over to the food processor so I can show you how fine to grind this. And by the way, thank God I was wearing pants for this video. But anyway, we'll pop that on the processor and grind that till it's very fine. Okay, we don't want to liquefy it, but we do want to grind this very fine, just short of that. And what we're shooting for is something that looks just about like this. And you're actually going to get a better look at it as we transfer it into the saute pan. So I went ahead and I did both heads and somehow fit it all into this pan. And then to that, I added a tablespoon of kosher salt, which looks and sounds like a ridiculous amount, but that actually ended up being perfect. So I tossed in some salt and turned my heat down medium high. And I attempted to sort of stir that salt in without knocking everything out of the pan, which was not easy. Since as you know, I love to use pans that are too small. In fact, if I do this again, which I won't, I'd probably use a soup pot, which I'm thinking would be a little easier. But anyway, I cooked that stirring on medium high heat for about a half hour, which seemed like much longer. And what I was looking for is this mixture to turn into something hot, wet, and soft. It basically turned into like a cooked cauliflower puree. And by the way, if you're having deja vu and this looks all very familiar, we basically did this exact technique when we did our cauliflower crust pizza, which actually did come out pretty good. Although I believe in that recipe, I added a splash of water to this, but here I attempted to do it dry, which worked fine. Although towards the end, the cauliflower did get a little bit of color to it, which didn't concern me since I'm gonna cook this in the oven anyway. So I went ahead and cooked that for about a half hour or so until I thought it was thoroughly cooked through. But as you know, we never guess. So I grabbed a spoon and gave it a test to make sure it was nice and soft and tasted like cooked cauliflower, which it did, which meant I could move on to the next step. And that next step entails squeezing out all the water we can. But before we do that, you have to let the mixture cool. Otherwise, you're gonna burn your hands, which is probably the only way you can make the experience of making this recipe worse. So I let my mixture cool down enough to handle, at which point we will extract as much water as humanly possible by squeezing it in a towel. And just like when we did the cauliflower pizza crust, the key here is getting that cauliflower pulp as dry as possible. So I went ahead and painstakingly squeezed out all that cauliflower, which seemed to take forever and was not fun at all. Although in fairness, while that step was annoying, at least when I was done, it didn't look that good. And then once I had all my cauliflower squeezed dry and my biceps had stopped cramping, I moved on to the rest of the ingredients. So we'll start with a couple large eggs in a mixing bowl, to which we will add some crushed garlic, as well as a pinch of dry oregano. I also tossed in some freshly ground black pepper, as well as the obligatory cayenne. And then I took a whisk and gave that a mix. And once that was set, I was free to move into final production. Final production of this step, that is. There's like seven more steps. But to finish this step, we'll add our cauliflower back in, along with a whole bunch of shredded cheddar cheese. But wait, there's more, cheese because we're also gonna add a little Parmigiano Reggiano, or what many of you call Parmesan. And then I grabbed a spatula and gave that a mix. And what my plan was here was to bake this mixture, chill it, and then cut it into sticks, bake those in a nice hot oven until crispy and delicious. And pretty much everything worked out exactly as planned except the end where it comes out good. But anyway, I gave that a mix before transferring it into a parchment line casserole that I rubbed with a little bit of olive oil. And the reason I made that a little longer than the pan is so I could lift it out when it was cool. So I went ahead and transferred my mixture in as evenly as possible. And I'm not sure why I always say that. Would people transfer this stuff in unevenly if I didn't mention that? Probably not. Although judging from some of the things I read on Twitter, a few might. But anyway, I transferred that mixture in and did a very professional job of smoothing it out. And once that was set, it was ready to bake. So I transferred that into the middle of a 350 degree oven for about an hour or until it looked like this, which does not look bad. It's kind of a beautiful golden brown. 
and it was firm to the touch. So I was pretty happy at this point, and still fairly optimistic. And it was very tempting at this point to cut up sticks and pop them in the oven to see what would happen. But I thought this stuff would be much easier to slice if it was cold. So I let it cool down to room temp, and then I wrapped it up and popped it in the fridge for a few hours until it was thoroughly chilled, at which point it was ready to unwrap, lift out, and start to cut. And of course, because of my genius parchment paper trick, I was able to lift that out, with up to 75% of the corners remaining uncracked. So that's pretty good. And at that point, I grabbed a nice big knife and proceeded to slice this right down the middle lengthwise. And then across like this into sticks, which I'm calling fries for marketing purposes. And then once those were cut, I went ahead and transferred those onto a silt pad that I'd brushed with oil, which is kind of unusual. Usually we use this so we don't have to oil the pan, but I thought that would help crisp it up. And I also brushed them over the top as well. And then last but not least, I finished these up with a little extra dusting of cheese. And that's it, seven steps and four hours later, these were finally ready for the oven. So I went ahead and popped those into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes or until they looked like this, which I would describe as misleadingly attractive. Yes, based solely on appearance, these look pretty crispy and delicious. And I really wanted to try one, but I knew it was too soon. Okay, the only thing binding these together is that crust and the cheese inside. So I knew I needed to let these cool down so that they would firm up. Hey, I'd been working on these all day. What's another 15 minutes? So I let them cool down and went in for a taste. And I cannot remember the last time I was this disappointed with the recipe. While they look crispy and amazing, they were neither. These had zero crispiness, zero crunchiness. But anyway, despite my debilitating and profound sadness, I plated them up anyway, next to some spicy ketchup. And I really think most of me hating this is just how hard it was to make and how long it took. I mean, if someone's passing these around at a cocktail party, I probably would think it's interesting and tasty. But in no way did the taste justify the effort and time this took to make. So to summarize, I wasted an entire day, got sore arms, totally messed up my kitchen, and ended up with something that's not even close to as good as roasted cauliflower. But despite all that, do I have regrets? Not at all. Because in the kitchen, you really don't know how truly stupid something is until you actually try it. In other words, we need to be the masters of our disasters, because that's how we learn and grow. But anyway, that's it, baked cauliflower fries. I love to say I really do hope you give this a try soon, but I don't. But regardless, I still want you to head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.